Today I'm going to show you how you can use checkboxes in Excel to create checklists that look like this one. Adding a checkbox is very easy. And using the outcome of the checkbox, so whether the box is checked or not, is also really easy once you understand how to use this one setting that I'm going to show you in a bit. And in case you'd like to improve your office skills, make sure you're subscribed. Now let's get to it. I want to add checkboxes right here. So as I'm going through my learning list and I finish something, I want to place a check mark in the checkbox and I want to cross this off my list. First off, let's add a checkbox. To do that, you need to go to the developer tab. Now, if you don't see the developer tab because it's not there by default, you need to right mouse click on your ribbon, go to customize the ribbon, under main tabs here, you're going to see developer. Yours is not going to have a check mark beside it. So you need to place a check mark and then click on OK. And then you're going to see developer right here. Then go to insert and from form controls, see the checkbox right here. That's what we need. Click on it and then draw it out where you want to have it. I want to have multiple checkboxes in each cell. I'm going to put mine right here. Then you can click inside it or you can also right mouse click on the checkbox and edit the text. Then you can type in what you want. So I'm just going to remove this and put done. You can also remove the text completely so you don't have any text in there. Now I'm able to place a check mark in here or uncheck this. If I want to copy this down and apply it to these cells as well, I can click on the cell itself. Okay, so make sure it's the cell selected and then just drag this down until where you want to have it. And now we have our multiple checkboxes. If you just need to add simple checkboxes and you don't need to do anything with the result of the checkbox aside from seeing it visually, then you're done. But if you want something to happen, when you place a check mark in the checkbox, then you need this one setting. That one setting is this. So you need to right mouse click on the checkbox and go to format control. There's also a shortcut key you can use. It's control one. That's going to bring you to this view. Under control, we have this value part here, but you can ignore that because that's just the current status of the checkbox. Mine is checked, so it's showing me that it's checked. You don't really need to touch this part. What you need is actually this, the cell link. This is where you're going to put the result of the checkbox. How does that look? Well, we can put the result right here. I personally like to put it on the same cell as my checkbox because this way I don't have to look for it. But just so that we can see it better, I'm going to put it on D2 and then click on OK. Take a look at this. When it's checked, we have true. When it's unchecked, we have false. Even if I go and delete this, if I place a check mark here, it comes back. It tells me it's true. If it's unchecked, it's false. Now, this is information I can use to control anything else. I can use this in formulas. I can use this in conditional formatting. But here's the problem, though. If I right mouse click and go back to format control, and let's actually change this to C so that it's placed under the checkbox. If I do this, and even if I take away these dollar signs here, both of them or just the one for the two, even if I do this and click on OK, and now let's take a look. So if I click away and click on this, I get the true false here. This is not controlled anymore by the cell, so we can see true false. It doesn't look so nice, but don't worry. We are going to make the font white. We can make it go away. The problem though is that if I copy this checkbox and I put it somewhere else, then when I right mouse click and go to format control, it's still pointing to C2. So these are not dynamic, even though they look like dynamic references. That unfortunately doesn't work. So this means that we need to go through each checkbox here and add its own cell link. So this one, would be C3. And then let's actually use the shortcut key control one. This would be C4, C5, and finally C6. Okay, so I put all of these right below each checkbox. And you can see that they say true. Let's change the color so that they're not visible anymore. 
Okay, so now is the time to use that result to adjust the formatting so that every time I have a checkbox here and this underlying cell is saying true, I want to have a strike through type of formatting. That's conditional formatting. I'm going to highlight this, go to home, conditional formatting, and add a new rule. That rule is going to use a formula. The formula is actually very simple. It's just going to look at this cell that has true false. That was C2, right? So let's see if I can actually click on it. Just carefully click to the side. It picks it up. Now here I have to be careful because I don't want the formatting of the entire range to always just look at C2. I want it to be dynamic. It should look at each individual row. So I need to take away the dollar sign from the two, but I can leave it on the column. Now let's go to format under font for color. We can adjust this if we want as well. We could make it a lighter gray. And let's also have that strike through effect. So then let's go with OK and OK. Now we can see this in action. All tasks are done. Now, in addition to this, you can also use this result in formulas. So let's say I want to have a list of outstanding tasks. I can use the filter function to get that list. My array or my tasks here for the include argument, I want to include anything that's here that's false, right? So I'm going to select this range and take a look at whether it is false. That's it. Close bracket, press enter, and I get everything that's unchecked. This one joins the list. It's there and everything works. Why is this working? Because it's looking at the underlying cell here. And remember, I changed the color to white so we can't see it. If I turn it back, we can see that these are true. This one is false. Now you can, of course, put these on other cells, right? You can put it on this cell here, but I just prefer to have it on the cell itself because otherwise I don't have to go and find it. I know where it is. That's also the default behavior in Google Sheets. Okay, so let's turn these back to white. As you can see, adding checkboxes is really easy. Using the outcome of the checkbox to control the rest of your report is also very simple once you learn how to use the linked cell in your formulas. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't subscribed already. I'm going to see you in the next video.